Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm your host, Anthazar, but y'all can just call me Anthe. <laughs> mm. Finally, my AuthorTube newbie tag. Finally getting with the program, aren't you, Anthe? Mm-hmm. We're getting it together. Sort of. Maybe. Eh. AuthorTube newbie tag, originally created by Jenna Streety. Streety? I am so sorry. So, I'm doing the AuthorTube newbie tag, the original one, and 2.0. Because I feel like both of them kind of repeated each other in certain areas, but then had new topics to talk about. So I'm going to do both and merge them together in one glorious, beautiful thing with my own spin up on it. Sure? I don't know. So, the first question that I added, who the frick are ya? <laughs> Excellent question! My real name is Brittany, and my published pen name is Anthazar. It's pronounced how it's spelled. We're not that creative, okay? You, you blame 16-year-old Anthe, okay? It was her fault. She was picking out syllables and going, oh, Anthazar. Sounds great! I will tell the story about how I got my pen name and why I've chosen my pen name in a different video that I'm gonna do. I wanna do a whole video about pen names, so look forward to it. First official question. How did you find out about AuthorTube? So I've been watching AuthorTube for years now. I guess I kind of include BookTube into AuthorTube, but they're really not, but I still kind of do because I've learned things from BookTube uh, about writing because you know, they read books, so. Go figure. I've been watching AuthorTube, BookTube for a long time now, probably seven years at least. I don't know how long BookTube and AuthorTube have been around, but it seems like a long time ago. I have watched a lot of BookTube pet peeves when it comes to writing and I wrote them all down so I could learn from them. Like I know everybody hates love triangles. Everybody hates them. But one interesting pet peeve that I learned throughout the years was someone was like, nobody goes to the bathroom. <laughs> Why does no one have to pee? <laughs> so I've learned some interesting things. You go, oh, hmm, hey. I didn't really think about that. That is how I found AuthorTube, mainly through its sibling, BookTube. Next question, what genre do you write in? I write in quite a lot of genres. I write in fantasy, drama, supernatural, some romance, and superhero. I have one contemporary romance story. That's like my only no fantasy book. It's not written, but you know, the idea is there. Lots of these genres I have interwoven with each other. Like for instance, my fantasy books will often have a subplot of romance and lots of drama. Drama will be in every single one of my books. Just, just count on it. Drama and angst because I love it. Love it so much. I am not one of those people that says, I don't like drama. I absolutely love drama. It just has to be somebody else's that I'm not like attached to. <laughs> That's how I roll. A lot of my stories are character driven stories with slightly slower plot lines. That's kind of how I like it. In fact, one of the books that I was supposed to read in December, I kind of fell off the wagon because the plot line was so fast that I was getting exhausted. My plot lines kind of are a little bit slower. They're character driven, but then a lot of times everything hits the fan <laughs> and everything goes to pot at the end. So that's how we like it. <laughs> Next question. What is your preferred writing tense? Third person past forever. I will forever advocate for third person because you have so much more freedom in third person. I've heard lots of newbie writers say, oh, I could never write in third person because I can't get into the head of my character without writing it first. And I'm like, what? What? Yeah, I love writing in third person because you can get into the head of the character while maintaining the freedom of third person. I love it. I, I have a really hard time reading and writing first person. Not that I won't ever, but we'll see about me writing first person in the future. It can always happen. It can always happen, 
I will never say no to it, but definitely my preferred is third person. Also, to add to that, what is your category of story? Is it children's book, YA, new adult, adult? I don't really know how to answer this question because I am not writing in a specific category. Uh, I suspect that my books are YA, maybe new adult, I don't know. A lot of my point of view characters are teenagers, but I have a lot of point of view characters that are adults in the same stories. I'm not really writing to one category, I'm just writing the story and what I feel like it needs. Next question, I'm gonna read it. What publishing company, literary agent, and or printing company are you represented by or use? If you're not published, what is your dream publishing house or literary agent? Yes, I am a published author. However, I'm a self-published author and I don't have a traditionally publishing house or literary agent dream. I'm quite happy with my chosen path of self-publishing. I loved the process while it is a lot of work and I'll make a video about it because there are a lot of things that I had to do. Am I against traditional publishing? Not at all, not at all, but it was never a dream for me. And to also clarify, I've never actually sent in my work to a literary agent or to a publishing house. The next question kind of go, goes along with the previous one, but are you published, self-published, or soon to be published? Let's do this again, shall we? Yes, I have self-published my own book. I did it two years ago. Then a lot of crap happened in the next two years, so... But we're back. What's your book's pitch? I'm gonna tell you my book's pitch for two of my stories, which is obviously Beyond the Luring Sky. It's a fantasy novel about a street savvy boy who meets a naive sheltered kid, which causes the street savvy boy a world of trouble. Of course, there's lots of magic, drama, and alcoholic fruits. My main characters are Kay and Sky. Kay is the street savvy kid and Sky is the naive airheaded kid. And it is available on Amazon now for only 99 cents, the ebook, $17.99 for the paperback. I'm afraid I can't sell the paperback any cheaper because that's what Amazon has forced me to do. But if you want to read something for free, let me direct you to my website. I have my superhero fantasy drama series that I am posting each week as a web novel. I had gotten a proof copy of this before I did Beyond the Luring Sky. So basically, this was my getting my feet wet, understanding certain things like you don't want white pages. <laughs> also, I picked bad font for the original book. I mean, it's not a bad font, but it it's a bad font. It's a bad font. The Marked Heroes is available to read down below for free. It's about this kid named Zachary Bennett. He is the leader of Unit 12, one of the 13 elusive crime-fighting teams across the country. When the country's most feared criminal enters his city, Zack becomes faced with a terrible secret that will shake the very core of his identity. And with it, he must make a choice. Next question, what is your biggest writing struggle? All of it, all of it. Moving on. It's usually during the first drafting process. If I haven't really gotten my characters in my head and I don't understand them, that first writing, it can be tough and hard and it can kill my creativity. A lot of times also I fall into a writing rut. I will say definitely a lot and certainly, and they're like certain. There are a lot of specific things that I do over and over again. So during the editing process, I tend to go and strip them out. Also fight scenes, man, they suck. <sighs> Nothing like a fight scene to put a slamming halt to your creativity. That happened with Beyond the Luring Sky. <laughs> it sat for a while on the final fight scene. <laughs> Just like book two. <laughs> it's the curse of the fighting scenes. Oh, and another story that everybody's waiting for me to finish on fanfiction.net. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> It's a fight scene. <laughs> Are we seeing a pattern? What's your best writing skill? Mm. It used to be emotions. I used to be able to write powerful scenes and make the reader feel a lot. Apparently I still do this, but I personally feel as a writer that it's not quite the same. And I'd like to kind of draw that back into my writing style. Also, I will say this tentatively, I am skilled in my personal opinion at writing dialogue. 
I'm tentative to say that because now everybody's gonna go and go, oh really? Oh really? And then they're gonna like, let me see if that's true. But I will say that it comes to me and I will let it flow through my mind. I'll edit it and make sure it sounds okay. I do a lot of work on my dialogue because it's my favorite part. I love writing dialogue. I love people talking in my books. And the best part is when everybody's fighting verbally, not actual fighting scenes because actual fighting scenes suck. They're the bane of my existence. When did you start writing? And what made you want to start writing? I've been making up stories ever since I was a little girl, but my first medium was Barbies. <laughs> but I actively started writing stories between the ages of 10 to 12. It's definitely been inside of me all of my life, but I've never really been like, oh, I wanna be a writer. Oh, I wanna be a writer when I grow up. It was just, I was one and I wrote stuff and I kept doing it over and over again. But I never really had many original stories in my head when I was younger. I was never actively writing a lot of stuff. I was writing fan fiction as a, kid and teenager without even realizing it. I had no idea that's what it was called. Not until I was much older, like an adult. Oh, the thing I've been doing all my life is called fan fiction. Who knew? Next question. What was the first story you ever wrote? So I think the very first story that I actually wrote down was about these four little toys I had and they were like little cat statues or something. They were really small too. And I wrote a little story about them and their little family. I think I found it when we were moving and I saved it, but at this time I don't know where it is in all of my stuff, so. What authors have inspired you to write? Hmm. Obviously, J.K. Rowling, her early work, <laughs> aka Harry Potter. I say that tentatively because I don't like what she's doing now. J.K., please stop. Also, C.S. Lewis, Christopher Polini, he published a book when I was a teenager and it was this cool, oh, he wrote this when he was 15, that's so cool. So that kind of was inspiring. Obviously, thousands upon thousands of fan fiction writers, your contribution to this world is deeply, deeply loved and honored. I'm not talking about the creepy ones though, I'm sorry. Y'all think fan fiction is all creepy, but it's not. Also, Atsuko Asano, author of number six. Also, Yuki Midorikawa, who is the author of my all-time, all-time favorite series, Natsume's Book of Friends. I will forever, ever love this series. Patricia C. Reedy, author of the Enchanted Forest series. Another one of my top favorites. Next question. Do you schedule your writing time? I tend to write as much as possible throughout the day, unless I have other things to do. Yeah, me. Do you write on a computer or a typewriter or a notebook? Or do you use a blend of all three? I generally use a laptop for most, if not all, of my writing. However, I do carry notebooks with me in my purse at all times. I also have my phone with me all the time. And I write with Google Docs. I will take notes with that. It's a good tool. Also, part of the question was, where do you write? I generally write on the couch, but I will sometimes eject myself out of this house and go write in my car somewhere. In the early days of writing Beyond the Luring Sky, New Jersey was hit with Hurricane Sandy. I came up with Beyond the Luring Sky quite a few days before Hurricane Sandy, before I even knew about it, before it showed up. And my house was nine days without power. <laughs> and then, thankfully, our power came on by the ninth day which was the day we were dumped on with like a foot and a half of snow. So yay, Hurricane Sandy. But during that time, I wrote 43 pages of Beyond the Luring Sky by hand in a notebook. I will do both. I have been known to do both. I haven't done that since, but yeah, <laughs> computers are wonderful. You can get more done in a day. Next question. Are you looking for new channels to follow? Yes, absolutely. I welcome new friends. This is an exciting new time. Itty Bitty Baby channels and other channels. I am excited to find new booktubers and author tubers and become part of the community. Hi, all. <laughs> Maybe insert a little crazy into your life. Who knows? <laughs> we crazy. What author tuber videos can we expect on your channel? I have no idea. Isn't that wonderful? So my plans include this. 
I am definitely gonna do more writing vlogs. I don't know when though, but I love doing those vlogs and during the month of November, they were fun. I loved it. I also want to make videos about showing my process of writing. When I get to a certain point in the Marked Heroes, I wanna do a comparison video of the four years ago version of the Marked Heroes to the current one. It should be good. So that can show you, wow, the editing process, I did a lot to update it and change it. I also wanna do funny videos about writing and some serious videos. I would love to do tips and tricks videos. I also want to make videos about my self-publishing process and when I plan to self-publish other books, I will take you through that process step by step so you can know what to expect as I fumble through the experience. <laughs> I also want to do some videos about how to prepare your book for printing if you're self-publishing. There are a lot of things you don't know you can actually do with the self-publishing you know, book. Like obviously throughout my book I have the title of the chapter here and then the chapter number over here. I do that with every single chapter. There are a lot of other things to watch out while preparing your book for print so I look forward to kind of preparing and making those videos hopefully throughout the year. Um, don't expect it immediately. <laughs> Not happening in January. <laughs> I also have some other plans. I've been writing them down. Oh my goodness, Anthea's writing stuff down. But yeah, I'm writing some stuff down about preparing to make YouTube videos because I really, really want to keep going with this. I don't want to fall off the face of the earth like last year in 2018. I don't want to do that. <laughs> it's too much fun. <laughs> what are you looking forward to most about being on YouTube? I've really enjoyed being here during NaNoWriMo. The community was extra active. There are lots of people making NaNoWriMo videos and it was just a ton of fun to be like, wow, all these other people are making videos and writing. Wow, I met so many other author tubers who wanted to do like 100,000 words and actually nailed it. What? You people are amazing and crazy, but amazing. I'm excited to be part of the community. I love making videos. It's so much fun. I have tons of fun. I made 27 videos in two months. That's crazy. I'm not gonna go that crazy. Probably during the NaNoWriMo months, I'll be crazy. Sun help. I think I answered all of the questions. I am so glad to finally do my AuthorTube newbie tag. Thank you so much for coming and checking this video out and coming to find out all about me and what to expect with my channel. Hopefully I can do lots of fun stuff and make you smile. <laughs> Welcome to my channel. I hope you will subscribe and give it a like because I would love to grow with the community. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, bye. <laughs>